So first off, we have this keypad. This could represent a keyboard or anything else that's somewhat similar. And for this to work properly, I need to explain that each of these buttons that we have here, they need to be their own individual part or component in the CAD modeling software, and they need to have their own individual coordinates. If you just have a multi-body part, say in Fusion 360, you export as a step, bring it in here, it's not gonna behave right. In this case, each of these were individual parts that were inserted, inserted into a model. So if we take a look at this texture that we have here, or I guess it's technically a label, you can see that we have the Keyshot logo spanning multiple buttons. Right now, when we look at how this texture is mapped, it is centered on model, meaning all of these individual buttons or pads, they have the same linked translucent material. They're all linked together. So if I were to change the color on one, it will change it across all of them. Now, when we take our texture and have it centered on model, it's going to look at all of these buttons and find the very middle of all of those, the middle of the bounding box, and it will align the center of the texture with the middle of the bounding box of all these individual parts. So now if I were to change it to center on part, we might need to adjust our mapping a little bit. And this also may have to do with my depth. Let's go ahead and set this to one. Let me go into my move texture and say fit to Y. So in this case, what we're doing is actually taking the logo and centering it on each individual part or piece of geometry. So the texture is looking for the local coordinate or uh, axis of these individual pieces and it's aligning the texture to it and it's going to put a copy of it on each individual one. So this is very useful just depending on your use case to have both of these options. Center on model is going to find the center of the bounding box and then if we scale it up it will continue to span the distance of each of these parts but center on part is going to place a copy of it on each piece and if we fit it to the y-axis in this case, we will get one individual logo on each button in the same location. So the next example I wanna show you uh, of the same scenario, just a different uh, way to do this, is in this triangle uh, model here. I'll go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit. So here we have this triangle with these three individual screws, and I actually added these threads in Keyshot, and we're gonna go into the material graph to take a look at that real quick. While we haven't discussed displacement quite yet, we will in a little bit, uh, I, I wanted to just cover a practical example of how this might work. So first here, we have the marble texture that was customized in order to make a bunch of horizontal lines. And I have these lines basically going at a slight angle on these screws here. And then I wanted to mask out the marble and I used a color gradient to make sure that I was only able to have white on the bottom or the shaft of the screw and black on the top. And then I used a color composite to combine these two to get the result I wanted. So if we look at the mapping of the marble, that is also centered on part. And that's why it points in the right direction on each screw, even though each screw is rotated in a different orientation. If I center it on model, it's going to place the middle of the marble texture in the middle of the screws and they will all, the texture just goes the same direction on all of them, but does not take into account the uh, original local axis of each of these pieces. So we wanted to set that to part and it works. And again, the reason this works is because each of these screws were in CAD, they have their own original local axis. And same thing for the color gradient. If this was centered on the model, we have black on top and it fades to white. But in this case, I have it set to part and it goes from black to white and it orients itself on each individual piece or screw. And this is really important because depending on the complexity of our setup, this could save us boatloads of time. And then I just color composited these and I used a displacement map to um, take this texture and push out the white areas and leave the black areas alone. And that's why we end up getting this and that's why we end up getting this artificial looking thread type texture on these screws. So two really different use cases, but just wanted to show you the importance and the value of understanding center on part texture modes versus center on model texture modes. 
And when you have the option to take advantage of center on part, it can save you a lot of time.